remind you that extremism in the defense of liberty is no vice. Travis Cook back with you once again, and a few days ago, alleged comedian Chris Rock made some rather eye-opening comments with regards to gun control and President Barack Obama. Uh, hit it. Uh, I am just here to support the President of the United States. The President of the United States is, you know, our boss, but he's also, you know, the President and the First Lady are kind of like the mom and the dad of the country. And when your dad says something, you listen. Wow. After comments like that, no wonder everybody hates Chris. The president is our boss, our daddy. Now, I don't know if Chris Rock is gratuitously uninformed about the type of, of government that our founding fathers set up for us, or if he's just projecting what he would like American government to be out in the public sphere during his comments that way. But as I go back and look at my history and look at what I learned in school and everything, I don't recall anything in the Constitution indicating to us as citizens that, the, that we were supposed to be subservient to members of the government in any way. I don't recall seeing anything in the Constitution uh, that says that the president was supposed to be of a paternal nature to any of us. In fact, as I read those, those founding documents, the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence seem to go out of their way to say the exact opposite. Now, in a practical sense, in a political sense, uh, Rock's idea that he's putting out there is ridiculous. Uh, when you look at the, the practical matter of it, a lot of this uh, question comes from the fact that after Obama was elected to a second term, he's given several directives to Congress that they need to... To, to compose legislation that he wants on certain issues, such as the fiscal cliff or immigration or gun control. That's all happened in the last few weeks. That Obama said, oh, Congress, you need to draft legislation that does X, Y, and Z. Now, that, uh, those directives, if you will, are, are bloviating at most. The, the president has no authority whatsoever to tell Congress what to do and what legislation they should pass. So really, that's all hot air on Obama's part. But in a practical sense, it would be illogical for Republican congressmen, particularly those in the House of Representatives, to sit back and allow Obama to play daddy or to allow Obama to be their boss. It wouldn't make sense at all. Because when you think about it, these Republican congressmen, particularly those in the House, were elected out of districts many times that voted hugely against Barack Obama. Now, don't get me wrong. Obama won the national election. He won the Electoral College. I'm not saying that he didn't do that. But in terms of a congressman, particularly one in the House, chances are that your district voted in large number against Barack Obama. So that means that your constituency, your voters, the people that determine whether or not you have a job, sent you to Washington to oppose the Obama agenda and to obstruct it in whatever way you can. So in a political sense, those congressmen would be betraying their own voters if they allowed Obama to play the part of daddy. But in a more general sense, these comments from Chris Rock seem to be indicative of a far more disturbing trend than I'm seeing in American politics these days. The idea of a president as a leader of the country, or that we all as citizens should just defer to the president in some way. When you think about it, when you look at history, that's a relatively new concept in America. It hasn't always been that way. And I suspect that this shows a drastic difference in how liberals and conservatives view the role of government or the role of presidency. And don't get me wrong, I have no doubt that a lot of the people that voted for Barack Obama, especially the second time around, they actually believe that the president is some kind of ruler. They actually believe in me not much different than a king or a, I don't want to say a dictator, although some of them probably wouldn't have a problem with that. And I think Obama's going that route. But the, the idea that the president should be a top-down director and a top-down boss of the rest of us is not that offensive to some members of the American population. And that should scare the living hell out of you. But when you think about it, 
it does show a difference in how conservatives and liberals view government view the presidency. You rarely hear conservatives speak in such paternalistic terms about any of our politicians. And indeed, we have a habit of calling them out when we disagree with them quite quickly. When George W. Bush did the first stimulus, people on the right were all up in arms about it. We hated it. We voiced our opinion of it. During the GOP presidential primary uh, last year, oh, we were in there the whole time. We were making it known to candidates what we would accept and what we wouldn't accept. And, and, and we forced candidates to change positions and do those sort of things. And then you look at the Romney candidacy itself and, and the discord between Romney and conservatives that went on the whole time. You see, at no point have conservatives ever sat back and said, well, that's our guy, and we're just going to go along with what he says, even if deep down we disagree with it. Conservatives really don't do that. And in general, I don't think Americans do that. Have you ever heard, as, as much as those of us on the right love Ronald Reagan, the best president of our lifetime and maybe the pres best president ever, have you ever heard any of us say anything to the effect of, well, Ronald Reagan was our boss? No, that's not what a president is as far as we're concerned. So while conservatives have shown that they don't have a yin for this type of top-down leadership, Democrats through history have shown that they have a, a tendency to be, to use the term, swept off of their feet a little bit more often than we do. You look at presidents like Barack Obama, Bill Clinton, John F. Kennedy, they all were guys that great orators, could, could give a rip-roaring speech, and they had a certain charisma, a certain personality, a certain je ne sais quoi, if you want to use a French term. And, and they, they made liberals feel good about what they believed. They made you, they made liberals anyway, want to follow them. And indeed, when you look at history, when the Democrats have had candidates that did not have that charisma, if you will, or that did not have that, uh, that public speaking ability, if you will, guys like John Kerry, Michael Dukakis, maybe even Jimmy Carter in his second term, Democrats haven't done well. For Democrats to get fired up and enthusiastic, they've got to have the guy who gives the rip-roaring speech and makes them feel good about themselves. Conservatives, much less so. It doesn't seem to be enough for liberals that they believe what they believe and they're confident in it. it. Just the opposite. It seems like liberals have some sort of need or some sort of want for someone to come along and make them feel good about what they believe. So I suppose in that sense, I guess I understand to a degree why Chris Rock looks upon Obama as his daddy, or our daddy, or America's daddy. Liberals historically have shown that they are so weak that they wish to be led, and that they wish to be part of something greater than themselves, whatever the hell that means. But conservatives usually don't think this way. We don't believe Americans are so weak and helpless that they need to be led by any president, regardless of party. We are our own leaders. And we believe that politicians, instead of being viewed as leaders, should instead be viewed as empty vessels, which voters fill and then send to Washington to execute our orders. You see, conservatives in, in particular, and Americans in general, do not take orders. We give them. Conservatives and Americans lead. We are not led. In the end, the rebelliousness that Chris Rock and others on the left have seen out of us over the last few years and that they've routinely castigated us for time and again, that rebelliousness is not about Barack Obama in the final analysis. And it never really has been. Obama's been kind of the face of it, I guess. But really, the rebelliousness that you've seen out of us over the last six or seven years is the rebelliousness against the idea that citizens need to be governed in a paternalistic manner. It is a refusal of the idea that government experts or intellectuals somehow magically know what is best for us more so than we do individually. It is the realization that our nation fought a revolution over the idea of citizens being used as pawns for a tyrannical government and the realization that it may be happening again. Now, maybe Chris Rock and many other liberals are okay with the idea, they're comfortable with the idea of top-down government. Maybe liberals and Democrats of all races and all ages and all genders and all whatever else are okay with staying on the government plantation. Sure, they don't have freedom, but maybe they think it's secure in some way. 
But many of the rest of us in America have a big problem with being kept on the government plantation, if you will. And we're fighting for our freedom. And that fundamental difference in how liberals and conservatives view government, not just liberal conservative politicians, but the two ends of the American citizenry, how we all, you and I, view the role of government and the conflict that is there, that explains the political environment that we're in today. Are we going to be a nation of government or are we going to be a nation of people who can think for themselves and act for themselves and make judgments for themselves? I hope to God it's the latter. That's what was intended by our founding fathers. But there are some, there are those, as scary as it is, Chris Rock among them, that evidently think that we need to be more like Europe, that, that, that we, the people, just don't have what it takes to make our own decisions. And we need to defer to Big Daddy Obama. And then when Barack Obama tells us that we don't need guns, even if we know differently, and even if we know that he's wrong, we're supposed to just sit back and let him have his way. I don't think so. The beauty of America, the beauty of America, is that when the president is wrong, we can come out and say, Barack Obama, you're wrong! That's what makes America great. That Barack Obama or no president rules over any of us. Obama is just another man. He's some guy that won a couple of popularity contests. Nothing more and nothing less. And that realization, that fact, is something that I know drives you liberals absolutely nuts. That's it for this week. This is America's Evil Genius. We'll see you next time.